Hey Flosstube, it's Kim back again with another cross stitching update. This is Flosstube number 53. I have officially been making videos for one year now. Today is the 27th of January 2020. So let's talk about some stitching. I got a lot done this week um, for a variety of reasons. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we are now halfway through my husband's deployment, and this is the very first week that was um, mentally and emotionally difficult for me. Um, and so that resulted in a lot of stitching as a coping mechanism, kind of, if you will. Uh, my own therapy, stabbing some fabric. Um, so I got a lot done. And you all know that I'm a stay-at-home mom. The only thing I have to do is make sure the kids get to and from school eat their food, do what they're supposed to, take care of the animals, and keep the house in decent shape. So, um, I'm not a neat freak. My house is not spick and span, but it's nowhere near a dump either. So, that leaves me with a lot of time, especially when I'm stressed out, to do some stitching. So, I got a lot of stitching done this week. Um, first off, I told you I was going to work on a summer ball for Full Coverage Fanatics around the world, for Australia, and also for the National Parks uh, Challenge. And I'm here on page three from the woman with the yellow dress uh, to the guy in front with the text, with the uh, tails. And I didn't think I'd get it done in a week, but I got my 4,000 stitches as of last night. Um, hold this up so you can see where I was working and then I'll show you the whole thing. So I had like part of the bodice done and that's everything else that I did. So I filled in her dress first. Her white glove is done, just hasn't been back stitched. Um, and then I came across and did all the flooring, all the pinks and grays in there, took some of the pinks up here. Then I did all the black and gray in his jacket because like I told you, I was um, going for the big areas of color first, right, right? Just get the most stitches done the easiest without a lot of counting. Um, so the floor and his jacket, and then to finish up the last five or six hundred stitches, I was uh, filling in her pink dress, and then uh, this person is wearing like a purplish blue um, in behind this guy that's dancing. So. 4,000 stitches on that. Um, to give you an idea, a regular Haid page is roughly between 7,800 stitches and seven, or 75 to 7,800 stitches. Um, one of these pages, it is it's about 80, I think. One, two, three, four. Yep, 80 across and 128 high. That means a page on here is... 10,200 and some stitches. So it's a great deal bigger than a normal Haid page. And that's why my, my goal for the year was just one page of this. So even though, you know, I'm almost halfway there with just one week's worth of effort, I'm not going to work on this for a few months now because that was a lot to do in a short amount of time. I was averaging over 500 stitches a day on this one. Plus I was working on other pieces on those days as well. So there is 4,000 stitches. This gets me the National Park of Arches. Um, I'm not doing my parks in order just because of how I originally assigned whips to my parks. I have Macintosh Mel as my first park, so I haven't got my 4,000 on that one yet. So I haven't been to Acadia. But there is the entire piece so far. And hopefully you're in focus. So, and all the dancers will stand out better once I get them backstitched on this page I'm working on. I tend to do the backstitching um, at the end of the page. Just because I'm, I don't attack it in a systematic way. I just go wherever the colors take me. Like, how come I never finished his other shoe? I finished his jacket and then I went to the pink, but I didn't finish it. Whatever. It's 4,000 stitches. That is Urches complete. And I forgot to show you last time when I finished the, the park with Kindred Spirits, 
Um, but I bought those stickers, so in my little notebook and my passport pages, so I have Badlands. Let's see if we can get you to focus. Uh, Badlands, Kindred Spirits, I wrote down the days that I worked on that. And then Arches for uh, a summer ball. Seven days on that one. So I have two parks. Um, I have two more parks in work with Macintosh Mill for Acadia and um, I'm about to show you what I got done on Super Size Color Expansion Museum Shelf. I started that one for Carlsbad Caverns. Um, so I worked on this only in the evenings, uh, depending on if, if I got enough done on a summer ball. So that is Museum Shelf by Amy Stewart. Um, and because I, you know, I'm towards the beginning of the page, I was able to do a lot because it was mostly like one color a night or half a color a night. Um, so I got in, let's see, four nights I worked on this, uh, 2,000 stitches, 10 stitches. So that's only equivalent to 1,000 stitches for the park. So I still have a ways to go. But you can see I made some progress. You can see much more clearly now where the... Um, where the, uh, sorry, I'm getting messages on my phone and it's distracting. Triceratops skull is going to be, and then what else is there? Some books. Okay, so there's a book here horizontally that a dinosaur is standing on. And then here's going to be some more book spines. Um, I have put in, let me get closer so you can see. Um, I have put in a little bit of green color and some, uh, like, burgundy dark reddish colors you might be able to pick out but this thing is heavy and it's hard on my arm so that's where I am right now um, I will keep working on this one a little bit at a time to keep working at that park again it's 10 stitching so for this park I have to do um, 8,000 10 stitches for Carl's by the Caverns that brings my full coverage stitching for the month Counting all my 10 stitches is half. Um, I got 1,800 on Macintosh Mail so far. Uh, 4,000 on Kindred Spirits. 4,000 on a Summer Ball. So that's 9,800 uh, stitches. So more than what I need in a month to keep up. But at the same time, I'm looking ahead because uh, mid-February to mid-March is Girl Scout cookie season for my oldest daughter. And since I'm solo parenting... That means that I have to take her around the neighborhoods and man booths to sell cookies um, in that month, in that like 30 day period. Um, and of course I can take my youngest with us when we're going door to door, but tag alongs or youngsters are not allowed at booth sales. So we'll be getting, you know, pawning her off to, to neighbors. Um, so that I can help my oldest man boost for cookie sales because it is February or will be February here in North Dakota. Most of our cookie sales are actually done um, in booths because no one wants to go door to door when it's wind chill way below zero. Um, fortunately, right now we're okay. It's 15 degrees, but February is usually worse. Um, so cookie sales means probably less stitching um, in that mid-February to mid-March time frame. So I'm ahead. I'm going to keep going ahead because I don't know how much stitching time I'll have um, while I help my daughter with her cookie sales. So other things I worked on besides uh, those two full coverage pieces, I decided to put in a few lengths of floss a day on other pieces, non-full coverage, um, those I did in the morning. So this was at night. A summer ball was late morning, all afternoon. And, uh, my non-full coverage was first thing in the morning. Um, so let's see. The first piece I worked on, of course, on Thursday, the day after it released, I did week four of the, uh, Peppermint Purple Free Blackwork 52 Week Sale. So I use that variegated green, and you can see it comes out nicely on this green fabric. It's a totally different uh, green, so it shows up nicely. 
and then the darker sections from the variegation and I started more on the borders for uh, the fourth row. So that is linked below. That is a free sale from Peppermint Purple on Facebook. And then after that, I decided to keep working on the top black border of the familiar cell for Ingleside Imaginarium. So I'd be all set to go um, once February is released. And I finished the top border this morning. Um, so pretty much like this side, the border was all done, but not the letter, not the uh, backstitch lettering. So I finished up these letters here and this part of uh, the border. And then this morning I had like the A and all this backstitch lettering. So the top portion of the border is now done. I will put this away for a few days until uh, February's Familiar is released on the 1st. And then I'll start working on that. Um, so that's all my stitching for this week. Four whips. Um, we'll see. Let's see. Next week, I'm going to work more on Macintosh Mill. I'm going to um, do a few more days on this just to show you where I'm at. So I'll, I'll work on filling this part in and up here on the building. Um, this is only half the design, so I still have a long ways to go. But I'll work on filling this in before I start all the backstitching. So I'll work on that for the remaining days in January. Let's see. 27, 28, 29, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Five, five days left of January. I'll work on that. Um, evenings, if I have the energy and the time, I'll put some more stitches into a uh, museum shelf. And then my mornings, a few strands, a few lengths of floss, I'll put into, um, this is Haunted Mansion Stretch Portraits by Good Morning Maui on Etsy. And I'll show you where I'm at. Bring this floss out of the way. So I will keep working on that second portrait with the tombstone. And we'll see where that takes me by next week. Just keep working on the tombstone and come up to the uh, lady that's sitting on the tombstone. We'll see if I can get one, this one done. And then maybe I'll maybe I'll move to a different piece. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Okay. Um, something I didn't mention last week. In Full Coverage Fanatics, we uh, did schedule a weekend event for February, uh, Valentine's weekend, the 14th through the 16th. We have a Love is All You Need event. Um, it is non-counted, so you don't have to uh, worry about getting a certain number of stitches in. And any way that you can relate love into your piece is good. So whether someone you love gave it to you, or it's for someone you love, or something in the piece uh, represents love, or you just love the piece, it's one of your favorites, um, any way that you can relate it, you can work on it for that weekend. Of course, it has to be a full coverage design. So, like, I could work on uh, Beauty and the Beast because it's, it's Belle and the Beast, and obviously they have love. I could work on any piece that I love. Um, so I haven't decided yet what I'm going to work on. Um, for Around the World in February, for Full Coverage Fanatics, we're visiting Brazil. And uh, one of the, the big things Brazil is known for is um, Carnival, uh, Mardi Gras. And one of the things that they always do in Carnival and Mardi Gras is they crown a king and a queen at the end. So for February, I will be working on Friends Forever by Ann Stokes because it has the elf queen on the throne uh, with her little dragon. So I'll work on that in February. More time on Macintosh Mill, more time on this museum shelf, and then we'll see what else I get to uh, for full coverage stitching in February. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
that is all of my stitching related content. Everything else from here on out is Air Force related. Um, so if you're not interested in that, I will see you next week. Uh, I was looking around. One of the things that happens when you move every three to four or five years, um, things get shoved where you wouldn't normally put them, be it from you just trying to find a space for something or from the packers when they're just trying to fill space. And so in my bedside table, in a, a drawer that I don't usually go in, I found some pictures um, from some of the stories I even told you about already. So the F-16 incentive ride that I had uh, between my um, sorry, I just, I'm getting a message from my husband about something I'm going to talk to you about. Um, so what is this? November 2001? November 2001, the incentive ride that I got. I found some better pictures. I gotta have to focus the phone. So there is, uh, me with the pilot, Major Champagne, a.k.a. Bubbles. That was before the flight, before we got on, before I emptied my breakfast. And another with me getting ready in the cockpit, all strapped in, ready to go. While the pilot does his pre-flights. And then I told you when we took off, we went uh, max climb and then uh, inverted at the top. And I took a picture from the cockpit and you would think the picture goes this way but it doesn't it goes this way because we were upside down and also this jet happened to have some nose art on it so i took a picture captain america i have some other nose art to show you for future stories uh, that is pretty cool so I flew in a jet with Captain America. Um, and then during my years at ROTC, one of the things that we did um, over like spring break, instead of, you know, going down to Florida and, and making fools of ourselves, my ROTC detachment would take base visits. Um, we'd, you know, charter a bus and drive down to different bases um, just to, you know, show the cadets all around different career fields and try to... Um, educate us on what different career fields do um, to give us a better idea of what we wanted to do because we had to make the decision on career field our junior year of college. Um, and also, I think it was the summer after my freshman year, so I was not yet a uh, contracted cadet. So I was still, you know, free to make my commitment or not. I took, I think it was like a, a week-long visit uh, to Altus Air Force Base in Oklahoma. Um, it was an Air Force program. I forgot what it was called. So cadets from all different detachments across country would uh, meet up and do like another base visit. And just uh, because obviously where we could charter a bus from, from Michigan State, you can't reach all these places. Um, so... This was a, a place I flew to commercially by myself and met up with a certain program. And so at Altus, we were able to look at a few different things. And one of the things that we did was um, we got to uh, meet and talk to the security forces guys, um, both that work with uh, canine, uh, like detection dogs and attack dogs. And, you know, they guard the base, all the bases in the Air Force. And... You've all, all probably seen or heard of stories where uh, a guy puts on that really thick coat and the dog attacks. Well, they ask for a volunteer and I ain't scared. That's me wearing one of those thick coats being attacked by an Air Force canine. So, yes, I could feel it on my arm. It, The dog's bite pressure was uh, pretty, pretty intense. Didn't leave any marks, but I could obviously feel it through the suit. And another thing that we did where while we were at Altus was um, they have uh, large airplanes there, cargo airplanes, and I think this was Altus. Uh, refuelers. Yeah, I've got my um, cadet fourth class stripes on my epaulets. Uh, so I got a KC-135 
instead of ride. Doesn't sound as cool as an F-16, but it is pretty sweet. Um, so we were able to get a ride in the KC-135 and watch as it refueled a four ship of F-16s. So in the back of the KC-135, there's this little um, low area you have to climb down like four steps and then lay down. There's no room to sit. You're laying on your stomach out this window and that's where the, the boom the boom controller lays there and controls this arm. This can fly up or down and fly side to side a little bit. And then the um, different airplanes can fly up to it. And they have radio communication. The, the boom operator and the pilot of the jet he's refueling have communication together. Um, so he gets to a certain distance and then the boom operator can control the boom. And there's enough space next to the boom operator that like one or two people at a time can go on either side of him and also look out. So that's why I'm kind of on the side. I'm not perfectly in line with the F-16 is because the boom operator is doing his job right there. And then I also took some really fuzzy pictures through the windows of the KC-135 of the other jets in the four-ship. So there would be two on one wing and one on the other for the... Um, the four ship while one is being uh, refueled so they fly on each other's wings like this so there's two f-16s there on the wing of the 135 that i'm on and if i was to turn my head 180 degrees i'd see the other f-16 on the, on the opposite wing and then after the flight was over we were able to walk out on the wing of the kc-135 so that's me as a freshman, incoming sophomore cadet. Um, and then another base trip that we went to was to uh, Bowling Air Force Base. I think we went to Bowling and Andrews uh, Air Force Base from Michigan State. We chartered a bus. One of the really cool things I got to do. Um, so that's just me sitting in a chair. That is the vice president's chair on Air Force Two. Now, keep in mind, this was April of 2001. So, who knows how things have changed since then, but that was pretty cool. I was sitting in the vice president's chair. So, that's why I got a cheeky, cheeky little smile on my face. Um, so, that's the extent of my stories that I have for you today. Um, I'm, I'm watching my messages because... About an hour ago, I found out that an E-11A uh, crashed in Afghanistan. Um, it is an electronic type plane. It looks like a Learjet. Uh, besides the Air Force markings, you wouldn't think it was an Air Force jet at all. Um, the news articles so far are saying that five or fewer people were on board, and they don't know um, if they made it or if they died. Um, and... Because of my husband's career field, he's fine. He's not, that's different, different location. But because of that airplane and what it does, people that we know from my husband's career field and the, my husband's plane that he flies on could have been on board that plane because there's, um, it's not additional duties, special duty assignments where they can take what they know on their airframe and apply it to others. And because it's an electronic plane in what it can do, um, we might know some of the people that were on board that plane. But it's going to take probably a day or two before they'll even release those names, not to the public, but even to um, the Air Force family because notifying next to Ken is always first. And that's after they determine the status of those people that were on board. Um, right now, there's no indication that the plane was shot down, but it did go down over Taliban-controlled uh, parts of Afghanistan. So if they did survive, who knows? Um, so we're waiting to hear from that. <sighs> yeah. Um, so that is all that I have for you right now. So everybody have a good stitching week and we will see you, I will see you 
not really, but you know what I mean. Um, I'll talk at you next week. All right, guys. Bye.